This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on expectations from G20 and COP26 summits. The participants are Atul Aneja, international affairs expert, and Manas Pratim Bhuyan, journalist. The powerful G20 grouping is holding a two-day summit from October 30 to 31st in the Italian city of Rome. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is traveling to Italy tomorrow to participate in the two-day summit, which is expected to deliver it extensively on various global challenges and uh, to find ways to deal with them, particularly the coronavirus pandemic. It has created economic devastation across the world, and the G20 leaders are expected to deliver it on ways to recovery, particularly economic recovery as as well as health recovery. The Foreign Secretary of India, Harshbardhan Sringla, today addressed a press conference in which he outlined uh, various aspects of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Rome to participate in the G20 summit and his visit uh, thereafter to Glasgow to attend the COP26 Leaders Summit. Let's listen in what Foreign Secretary Harshbardhan Sringla said today. G20 as well as COP26, as you know, these are both back-to-back summits. The global agenda on climate change and energy transition is the focus for both these summits. So G20 will also consider climate change, of course, and as we move into more specialized focus on climate change at uh, the COP26. Today, the G20 represents approximately 80% of the world's GDP, 75% of global trade, and 60% of the world's population. Thus, it is fitting to say that over time, the G20 has emerged as not only the premier global forum for international economic cooperation, but also an important platform to exchange, innovate, and deliberate on policy issues that have a direct and tangible impact on the quality of life of our citizens. The G20's success and continued relevance can be measured by its immediate response to the COVID-19 pandemic and its focus on sustainable and resilient uh, economic recovery from the pandemic. As a founding member of the G20, India has always been a proactive and positive player in its processes, speaking not only for itself but also for the larger developing world. Italy's theme for the G20 summit for its presidency is People, Planet, Prosperity. It actually comes from the 2030 UN Agenda for Sustainable Development. And the focus of Italy is on recovery from the pandemic and strengthening global health governance, economic recovery and resilience, climate change and energy transition, and sustainable development and food security. India fully supports the priority areas chosen by Italy. We have been a strong advocate in the G20 for supporting equitable and affordable access to COVID-19 disease control tools, including vaccines, therapeutics and diagnostics, through technology transfer, diversification of supply chains and production hubs. As a result of our efforts, the G20 has recognized that extensive vaccination is a global public good. And I have to again emphasize that this has been our contribution in the G20 lexicon that would uh, be evident at the summit. So, Mr. Anija, how do you see the G20 summit and what is your expectation from the G20 leaders summit at the Italian city of Rome? Very important to know the context of this meeting. As you have yourself mentioned, that this is taking place at a time when we are moving out of uh, coronavirus pandemic. We have not been fully out of the woods, but the trend line is good. So, the context essentially is how do we plan post-COVID world? Because COVID has caused enormous disruption in terms of economy, in terms of supply lines, healthcare systems, even uh, geopolitical issues. So it has had a cascading effect on all aspects of human endeavor. So we have to actually or relink the broken links in which an integrated world or existed before the COVID-19. So that is where it is. The agenda, therefore, is very vast. How do you rebuild a post-COVID world. I mean, that is where you have to restart in a way. You're restarting life in a way, in a new era. A grouping, which is the most powerful grouping. And so you're also looking forward and seeing, anticipating problems that will come ahead of a strategic nature. Things like climate change. Now, these are issues which are long, uh, will impact the human race for a very, very long time. So therefore, you're going to set basic strategies for such uh, big undertakings uh, which will confront uh, humanity in the coming uh, decades, if not longer. Then you also have, Manas, many geopolitical problems uh, which have come in. And I think that, for example, Afghan situation, it has had a huge footprint over a vast region. In fact, it has impacted the entire globe, right from developed countries like the United States down to Iran to India neighboring countries, Central Asia, Russia. So it's a global event which took place. I'm just giving you an illustration for one. 
There are many other such developments of a geopolitical nature which need to be addressed in a collaborative manner. So I think that this uh, summit gives an opportunity to start the deliberations on how do we keep a more livable, a safer world and a world which is less prone to conflict because the challenges have increased. I think one more thing which will link to climate change minus would be energy security. And because there is one level, there is a transition going on from conventional energy, which is a hydrocarbon driven energy to renewable energy. And it's not an easy transition to take place. And, you know, if we don't get it right, then there are serious implications on the way. So I think global energy security will be another major issue, which is likely to be addressed by these most powerful countries of the world. So in the course of the coronavirus pandemic, India quite regularly pressed for a comprehensive global strategy to deal with coronavirus pandemic, including uh, dealing with the health aspects as well as economic aspects. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi is expected to again pitch for a united global approach to deal with the challenge of COVID-19 as well as to deal with future pandemics. So do you think the upcoming G20 summit in Italy is expected to come out to take concrete outcome in terms of dealing with uh, the health disaster? and uh, economic fallout of the disasters? I think there will be these roadmaps ahead of a post-COVID world. Uh, now, there will be various areas and they will be driven by the achievement of SDG goals, that is uh, SDG goals as defined by the United Nations. So I think that is something which will be the guiding light and uh, what happens, the new initiatives which are taken will be dovetailed to achieve that grand objective. So I think that is going to very, very concretize, very strongly concretize during the G20 summit. I think there's one thing which India can do, which can supplement our initiatives in healthcare sector and uh, along with South Africa, you know, look at the patents regime which we have taken to the WTO jointly and which the United States is also supports. I think physical security in the Indo-Pacific region, it actually is an extension of what we did in 2004 during the Asian tsunami. That is humanitarian resistance and disaster relief. I think that kind of initiative in the Indian Ocean region from, let's say, the east coast of Africa down to Malacca, I mean, the HADR, the humanitarian disaster relief, I think that's one more thing which India can do and contribute on a regional, if not a global level. I think there is a vast area which is now open because we are in a fluid situation now. And as we get out of coronavirus, I think we, we must keep our eyes and ears open and our minds open to seek new opportunities. And those opportunities will be dovetailed to our, our capabilities, our capacities and strengths. Our accrued to the developing world. And I think over here, India can play a very major role. I think any kind of transition, though it may appear very negative, has its own opportunities. I think India now has an opportunity to explore and to promote certain niche areas, which are its USP. For example, if you talk about the post-COVID world, Manas, we've already flagged it that India can be a bigger pharmacy of the world than even before. In terms of vaccine development, India as a global hub, I think that is a very important point. And you know, India's own uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat of making products in India for the world. I think that itself is an opportunity in the post-COVID world because as I said earlier, the older supply chains have sort of either been twisted or have been broken. So when you build new supply chains, I think India can leverage its natural advantages and uh, channel them through the G20 network. So I think there's a very big opportunity for India if we get our act together and are focused and clear about uh, the roadmaps ahead. I think we can do a lot in collaboration with the developed world and link it up to the developing world. So the economic recovery is a major aspect of the deliberations among global leaders. And India has actually proposed the mutually acceptable COVID-19 vaccine certification framework to its various partners, primarily to ensure that a simplified international travel regime would help in just bringing tourism back and it can create a lot of economic activities. And that way, in fact, even smaller countries like Maldives or many other countries in the Indo-Pacific region can benefit from it. So do you think, Mr. Anija, that there's a need for a global framework to ensure easy travel, actually, I mean, to lift restrictions on travel so that, in fact, I mean, there is economic activity, there is tourism. India has been pressing for it. 
uh, do you think it's time that uh, forums like G20 come out with some concrete plan to boost tourism to ease travel restrictions and uh, to promote uh, basically economic activities through tourism i agree completely manas the tourism is a very major sector and india rightly is focusing on it you know we recently had the new airport coming up in kushinagar which is a international site for for pilgrimage tourism related to buddhism so that's just one example that tourism is not no longer it's very globalized and india is one of the major tourism hubs at least potentially one of the major tourism hubs of the world so that is a huge potential but then in order to promote tourism we also have to contain covid-19 completely and i think that's where the two go together the tourism initiative and the vaccine initiative because as uh, progress beyond the 1 billion doses which is a massive achievement after being hit by the second covid wave now is the time for india to export these vaccines so that the entire or especially in the developing countries that people and even in the developed countries that people are free of covid once people are free of covid then we come back to tourism sector i mean the two have to go together i am not saying that you do one and then the other will start there is a connection between both the initiatives i think that is something which india should push because if you do not contain covid and we do not have the revival of flights as they used to be and people fear for their lives because of travel then i'm afraid the tourism initiative is not going to go so i think we have to very aggressively push for this devil engine approach of pushing forward with the, the vaccinations um so anuja from rome prime minister narendra modi will travel to glasgow to attend the world leaders summit of the 26th conference of parties which is briefly called cop26 and uh, cop26 is being this time billed as one of the biggest ever congregation of world leaders and experts to combat climate change and prime minister modi is going there to glasgow on a three day visit he is leaving for glasgow from rome on the evening of 31st october and he will return to india on the 2nd So how do you see prime minister's visit to Glasgow to attend the COP26 leaders summit and what could be his outlook to deal with this pressing challenge of climate change India has been maintaining that the rich countries should do more to combat the challenge and India has been consistently following this policy so how do you see the COP26 and prime minister's participation in the leaders summit I think one is exceptionally important because the India has a very concrete road map now towards the 2050 goal of uh, net zero carbon footprint. I mean I think that's already there. We have a plan of 450 gigawatts of renewable energy by 2030. Then there are major initiatives where India now France has joined India for the solar alliance to take it forward. India has joined Sweden for what is called the leadership group for industrial transition which has Sweden as a main partner so india's plans from domestic to global the road map is very clear and uh, it's this proactive approach which the world now recognizes so prime minister modi's intervention is will play a major role in energizing the concrete steps towards achieving clean energy goals as well as arresting most importantly climate change which is a cause of so much of stress disasters to various parts of the globe this visit will be very important i think there's one more thing which the prime minister will be able to do is along while we go ahead for uh, achieving these major goals i mean we cannot lose sight of realism and uh, balance here that you cannot achieve these goals overnight and you cannot eliminate hydrocarbons in a jiffy you know you need natural gas you need oil i mean it's that is not over i think the contribution is balance and a smooth transition in a very realistic manner manner which is not impacting the livelihoods of poor people not only in india but in various parts of the globe ideally suited to push for renewable energy and energy transition and at the same time being where we are to strike that balance and that sort of sensitize global leaders that you got to have a balanced approach over here and we cannot go from energy transition to energy fundamentalism Uh, thank you mr anuja for your in depth analysis of the expectations as well as uh, possible outcome at the g20 summit as well as cop26 crucial meet on climate change thank you so very much thank you so much max you were listening to a discussion on expectations from g20 and cop26 summits the participants were atul anuja international affairs expert and manas pratim bhuyan journalist 
This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on Air. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.